active over. Potential of Hachiman to the 18 that goes through. But it's just been working fantastically. This pick now. I imagine the answer to that. Not going to do so. More to counter the enemy solo laner. You're going to lock that one in. And hit, hit her. Burnt beads. Something like the contestant, but just under the radar for a You're able to build just like full tank. I'm definitely going to want to shore up those plucks if you're Preds as we go throughout the game. But he was invisible. All right. They are, uh, they are trying to find the pressure regardless. Johnny does have that ultimate. Maybe forced to use it to get away, but instead it'll be Kha'Zix using that. The proc of it. And so... Should be able to chase out Johnny given the opportunity. Vampiric Bats off the mark, knocked up oh into tower. Rapio still has ultimate, be forced to use it here, but that is a, 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 as critical a failure. Uh, assassinate, by the way, might just die here. Fortunately for Rapio, Johnny just uses an entire kit clearing no! out the jungle. And Hawk, off the back of a phenomenal play, loses it all. Oh no, he gets soloed in the... What was previously in Season 9, a 4 minute rotation, has been pushed back to that 8 to 9 minute mark. As Johnny, nice ultimate, connects with Gunter, and that should just be it. It is, Johnny cleans up the kill onto the mid laner, but now Rapio looking to answer back, needs one more auto, and will find Johnny in return. Preds lurking in the waters, find safety under the tier one tower, but Davey and Spuddy have both rotated over to this side of the map as well. All it'll do is burn the mounted archer. This is the early game fight. This is the first fight of the, the game. You want to be here for this capture point. And Hex Mambo, I, I think surprisingly, are, it, it feels like their comp has the ability to respond a little bit better. Now. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it's not as if Hex Mambo are, are looking at a composition like game one, where it's get to 30 and just win. Wow. Which is why we see these attempts here. Gunter is stuck in the tower. Bleed no good. No way! Johnny Ooh. has to go back in, but Hawk in trouble on the other side. In trouble is right. Rapio channels the ultimate, but does not hit the last strike and misses to Vampire Bats as well. Hawk on single digit HP. But Certainly going to be serrated edge, but with Johnny. I know he's just such a massive fan of the, the hasten katana. Maybe he switches things up. Ozix caught out here and will get the CC channeled. He has not gotten to play the game, but I don't I don't know if they have the damage. They've rotated over and they do have the damage. They take down Big the stun. support, but they've used everything to do it. And Julio is rotated over now from the soul lane. Old skit channeled on the escape, and Johnny is forced to for the works. Could be Pyromancer pulled out and burning slowly. Hawk's nearby, might be able to keep it interesting, but won't be working his way into that right side jungle concern, perhaps. Rapio should be able to displace himself pretty easily. This is a telegraph play. If Kana's this far up, you got to think there's something happening behind it. Kha'Zix has to go to the Fury. He TP'd over, keeping Spudio out, but Julio and Kha'Zix are in between him and his team onto the Gold Fury, and they don't really have the shred to keep this one. They might have the shred onto Kana, though, as Rapio finds his way into the back line, forces the Rama ultimate, and now Hawk is into the home sweet home in the back line as well. But Spudio is getting chased down and will be cleaned up by Rapio on the other side of the fight, though. Johnny has arrived, and he will trade out the soul lane, or a one-for-one one thus far, and low health bars for the wargs, but they'll continue to chase on the back of Rapio, and under the tier one tower, he will dive. But it's Julio has continued to maintain this frontline position. Team 0 and 2 not a credit, not accurately depicting how much impact he's had in these fights, but at the end of the day, Sniffleheim Wargs able to reset themselves a little bit healthier back towards this Gold Fury, and they take it with a little fanfare. Hex Mambo oh starting to stack up some damage. Gunter dropped low. Hawk's got to be the, the concern point now. A lot of an HP shield afterward could make him much more powerful in that back line. Pyromancer picked up and Kha'Zix picked up, thrown back to the Wolves as the Wargs will knock him down to half HP, but look at Julio. He has the perfect flank and is setting up for an engage, but he only finds the one set of beads and will back off after the fact. For an unforced error, or waiting for an opportunity on map, maybe Julio finds a secondary fearless on Gunter and all of a sudden that opens the door completely, or, or Johnny does the exact same, poking and prodding for positioning. It's really all they can do. Yeah, an unforced error may be exactly what they found as Hawk was up a little bit too far. But Gunter is turned on to as well and Spudio trades the mid laner for mid laner as now Julio finds Huge. a double fearless onto the tanks and that leaves Johnny alone with the carries. He'll find one, he'll find two! And it's now Rapio alone versus four as Spudio finds a triple. Spudio, Johnny makes use of all the commotion to run Havoc 
in the enemy back line. And Hex and Mambo come out ahead massively. Fire Giant now on all five. Here's your opportunity. Here's your go card. Hex Mambo with Fire Giant on all their teammates. Means they can just go ahead and start sieging into Niflheim Wargs. The Wargs have got decent base defense. Anytime you've got a standard mage, you got a little bit of difficulty fighting into it. Gunther should be able to poke out the front line of Hex Mambo. Davy's got enhanced range on his auto attacks as well. And with a yellow numbers build, Odysseus Bow will keep those blinks in check. But Hex Mambo don't even necessarily need to get into a Phoenix here. So long as they can knock down two tier twos or even grab the beacon, would be just fine. Well, this line works. They feel like they still have the advantage. They were the ones that lost that fight just now, but they don't waste any time in pushing up and taking the Oni Fury right out from under. Hex Mama, they catch Johnny back in. He's back in base. They'll grab the Oni Fury, and this will not make sieging easier for the Hex Mambo. But critically, we're now getting around this time, and the third Stygian Beacon has been captured now for Hex Mamba. They are going to have this Fire Giant when these Titans spawn. And looking at the tower damage, I, I think they might spawn in the mid lane as they did their side of the map. So, a tier 2 trade in the cards here for the Niflheim Wargs, solo for duo. But the difference being that the Titan of the Wargs going to die before it even makes contact with Hex Mambos. They are all the way pushed up just to take down that Titan before anybody gets a chance to push with it. But if they're careful, Niflheim Wargs will use this as an opportunity. Kha'Zix with a beautiful ultimate early to dissuade the push, and it will do exactly as it intended. Gunter and Davey do not get to step See up ya. to the Phoenix. And Preds left alone in the jungle. Johnny will find that pick as well. And now... They may look to stop the backs. Johnny, Davy has no idea he might be dead from the bleed. And Johnny and Hawk combine. Three fall now. And Julio and Spudio grab themselves a left side bird and still have their Titan at full HP. They might bring the rest of the team here and try and push. Could be. Maybe you want the Titan to delay a little bit here. Not necessarily push it all the way into the enemy Titan room and instead have it get there as you start to approach that mid Phoenix. It's just Julio. Trying to buy time, distract the members of the Niflheim Wargs as the rest of Mambo work their way down the center of the map. Mid Phoenix already down to half. Runic Bomb channeled and it will get taken down. And now the rest of the team may look to end the game here. Gunter and Rapio oh, Preds all quick. looking to defend. But the Titan is falling fast. It's down to 20% HP. Julio's in on the ultimate. And it'll be Hex Mambo who take it in two. Man, the Wargs. I love the idea. Keep pressure up on the right side. Distract. Your enemies don't allow them to play around that Titan Siege, but they are held in place for too long. Johnny finds a priority pick on the Preds, and from there, a clean team fight win. Didn't even get to have an opportunity to talk about Johnny's build, and he went for a fun one. It was Bumba's Hammer plus Shadow Drinker. He was going to be permanently invisible with infinite CDR, Ooh. but the game ends just before he's allowed to have too much fun with it. Clean stuff, man. This is a team you have to keep your eyes on. We didn't even get a chance. The other Runic Dagger was built by Julio as well. We didn't even get a chance to look at that. It just felt like that last Fire Giant Siege, the wargs didn't really know how to respond. They put all of, most all of their members on the right.